So we're going to start off. Um, this is a talk basically for anybody at any level of design systems, um, kind of introducing what it is. So basically what, why, and how about how we do the design system. And Yana will say why we called it our playground. And we call it our playgrounds because we believe that the design system should be fun and it should be a great experience. So that's why we call it our playground. So let's jump right into it. I'm going to talk about three things, um, the what, the why, and the how of design systems. Let's start with the what. Uh, so design system can be defined as many different things. Sometimes they're synonymous, synonymously used with three different things like the style guide, the pattern library, and the component library, when in actuality, it's all three things. So defining a style guide, it's basically just a document that guidelines each of the repeatedly used elements. Um, it also includes um, visual identity, the icons, typography, and colors. And most importantly, it brings a common language for product owners, designers, and developers. Uh, so moving on, a pattern library is kind of similar. It's just an organized set of reusable components. So it's it's either code or it's design, either one of them. Um, and it's pretty much just the Lego blocks, like Louis said, of uh, design or, or component design. Um, we use atomic the atomic structure. So, you know, from atoms, molecules, organisms, uh, all the way up to templates and pages. Uh, what's cool about the pattern library is there are no rules that dictate how it's assembled. You can put it together any way you want. So that's what's uh, very simple. It's just a strictly functional, a functional element. Uh, so nothing else to add on it. No, no uh, business logic or anything. So the component library is pretty much a combination of everything. It's also reusable components, but it's the style guide plus the pattern library together. Um, having a component library, the design and development have a head start, so they don't have to rewrite code over and over again. There's no one reinventing the wheel. The code that goes into the system is reviewed and improved. So that way, uh, you know, you can be sure that whatever goes in there is, is solid. Uh, so I gave you a a definition of design systems, but I I really like baking. So I always liken everything to baking. Um, I wanna kind of give you a better picture of how a design system is in the real life, I guess. So if you think of a style guide, it's kind of like the recipe book. The recipe book kind of tells you guidelines on how something should be created. Not necessarily, you know, exactly how, it's not necessarily the components to build, it's just kind of like a guide. And when you take a look at the pattern library, it's your very basic elements. So it's your sugar, your flour, your butter, eggs, and there's no real way to tell how they should go together. I guess that makes a good baker, that tells a good baker from a bad baker, however you put it together. So I think our component library is pretty good. Um, you can put it together and make a cake, donut, muffins, a crepes, or a croissant. Uh, all of those, all of those combined create uh, all of the basic elements combined create these pastries. So uh, that's what's uh, cool about having a design system. If you take a look at the cake by itself, you can add you know, all these different flourishes. CSS is what I call this flourish so that you can have different variants. And all those variants live in the component library. So all of those things together make up a, a whole cake. And we have so many variations of the cakes. Hope that kind of clears everything up. And now Jana is going to talk about the why. Now Jana feeling very hungry after all of the recipe cookbooks, but I will try to explain why. But before I will start explaining why, let's imagine that we will ask product design and development teams stick together in the same room and look in the same website. In our example, we will use OpenSea website. The chances are they will start thinking about absolutely different things. The project will probably start thinking about how to generate the revenue, how to attract different users. Design will most likely start thinking about the pixels, colors, pagination, and other bits, which, again, 
Um, and development will start probably thinking about the functional part, how to pass the data, how to enable search, how the buttons needs to work, and etc. So really, because they will start thinking about the different things, they would not know how to communicate together. And eventually their communication will hit the wall. I mean, currently it will hit the door, but the difference is not that too much. Um, so me and Kat, we created the common language for this type of problems, where it is the product design, engineering, and even the project management will be able to communicate um, why the design system, the documentation and the TypeScript is also additional bits that they know how to, what to expect, how to communicate. So um, we are trying to really solve the common problems for the product owners, designers, and developers. It's a streamless workflow. It's much higher efficiency, easy onboarding process, less time and cost on developing and creating, and also a common language. And it's very easy to hand off to design team, to developers, to product, and a very fast delivery to production. So we don't really need to spend so much time trying to reinventing the wheel. But there are so many libraries already available. Why are we using yet another one? Because they're all unique and our one is unique for us. It's unique uh, for Candy. And this is how it works in Candy. Yeah, so I am not going to do a deep dive on, on any of these topics, but this is how we do our design system at Candy. So we use React with Next.js. On top of that, we use something called Stitches, which is really similar to styled components or Emotion, if you're familiar with that. Um, then we have uh, documenting tools and development tools like DocuSource and Storybook. Um, and something unique is we also use a CMS. Uh, just if no one else is familiar with React and Next.js, it's just an open source JavaScript library. And Next.js is a framework. And what's cool about it is it allows server-side rendering and it generates static website. And right off the box, it allows for strong typing. So another thing for communication is, you know, having a TypeScript so that people know what kind of props to put to pass into the elements. Um, I really love Stitches. Stitches is a really lightweight performant JavaScript styling library, and it has a focus on the architecture and the developer's experience. But why we like Stitches is there are three, three things that um, we found really useful with it. And one is a theme token. Uh, they also had really good variants, and we also need to use themes at Candy. And the reason is because it's good for scaling. So basically a theme token is a reusable CSS variable um, it can be used throughout, throughout the whole app so that developers or even designers don't have to remember exactly the hexadecimal codes to it or even what font weights go where. And what's good about this is for, for our team, we're developing this language with, de with the design team. So we know exactly what color means what. So it's exactly in the code, the same color as it is in the Figma design, for example. Uh, what a theme token looks like is this. This is how um, theme tokens look like in stitches. Uh, so you don't have to remember all those things. It also has variants. So imagine a component. Um, you want to change this component a bit. You can add a, do, a, a new variant to make it slightly different. So it's the same component, but it has an appearance of the secondary uh, variant. Uh, so it just looks like that. That's how the, that's how the syntax might look like. Stitches also makes it easy to theme and it makes it easy to theme multiple brands. So what we need to do at our at, on our project at Candy is we need to scale so that multiple brands have their own unique themes. And that's why Stitches makes it really, really easy. So it makes it easy to scale. Um, I'm just gonna flash a screen of what syntax and Stitches might look like for our for React. Um, not gonna get into it, but it, it looks really similar to emotion or solid components if everybody is, if anyone is familiar with that. And yeah, this is just what it might look like. Feel free to go to stitches.dev and learn more about it. I'm gonna pass it on to Yana. Yeah, um, as Kat already mentioned, we are using two um, documents, uh, we're using DocuSource, which is a documentation for the pattern library. 
and we're using also the um, Inasa documentation um, library. But let's just talk about the docusource for now. The docusource is the used especially only for the pattern library. It's just the um, cat um, recipe cookbook flour and butter is what it's used for. Um, the, it uses MDX, if somebody don't know, it's just the markdown uh, visit JSX. It's very easy to um, read and for the developers, it's also great because we can use the actual code. And this is the library where it's uh, the whole design system, the pattern library lives in it. And it's a single source of truth. It's a great communication tool for the design team, for the development team and the design team in, in development team. So that's just a quick example of me and Kat's amazing pattern libraries, partially our playground, where uh, on the left side, you can see it's a um, cat cook cookbook uh, with the ingredients. This is our components. And on the right side is the same thing as the button with a different variant. So the idea here is we don't need to create yet another button. We're just changing the color by the changing the variant name. And this is how it works. But I mentioned the, and Kat mentioned the storybook. What do we do with it? Because we already want design system documentation tool. The storybook, if home is a home for the component library, and the component library is much bigger. It's a tool for UI development and the communication tool again, but for the bigger picture. It's being used broadly by the design team developers. And it's more like mm, a cake, muffin or croissant. This is where we are documenting our croissants, how, how it's needed to be used with the toppings on top of it. So um, to just recap, um, the developing with the design system, um, we have a pattern library, and I'm so sorry, I'm not using the recipe book right now. Let's just be a bit more precise. We have a um, pattern library, small box. It's just a image button box, nothing really complicated. It's just a dummy components itself. The component library uses the composition. The composition is pattern library blocks built together. And it makes it very simple to use. And we're using the TypeScript there on this level. So the developers know exactly what to expect from the component, as well as the testing documentation will use the same properties, the same parameters, and of course the CMS, but that's our secret for a bit. Um, so if you look on the right side, the variants, it's, we call them appearance, is actually the same component but with a different toppings. That is what makes our design system great because we can use the same single source of truth, but we will have a different result for, for the website, for the web experience. But what about CMS, Kat? Yeah, so in our company, we have a unique tool, which is CMS, a content management system. Um, it's used by business. And what's important about this is that it connects the design system with content. So that way product owners or site ops doesn't have to go through development to change the to change the content on the website. They just go directly to the CMS. How the CMS connects is there is a CMS, there is the API that connects to the CMS, which connects to our app and the pattern library and the component library both feed up to our React app. So it looks like that. I just wanna show you a quick example of what it might look like to have a CMS and a design system. So if you look on the left side, this is what you might see if you're familiar with WordPress or something, um, just some forms where you can add content. So the heading maps to the heading component in the design system. The description maps to a subheading in the, in the design system. You can choose colors from the themes so that it's restricted or whatever colors we add to the CMS. So they can stick with the theme, uh, whichever site they're on. And you can even have CTAs, so however much. Um, so one more section. I know we talked about three sections for the how, but a bonus section is the dedication. You need to have people dedicated to the design system in the company. Um, I saw a talk on YLD by, I think it was Jenny Mullis. She talked about the politics of design system. And it's really important that product design and development all follow this design system structure. So we have a common language, so we all work together. And it starts from the bottom all the way to the top. 
everybody has to have this uh, commonality in order for us to progress. So it's important to have a dedicated resource. And to recap, I talked about the what, we talked about the why, and we talked about the how of design systems. So bringing it all together, we will um, show you just a quick example of how it might look like. Um, using the pattern library um, as a smaller blocks, it's just again, image block, buttons, wherever it is, recipe cookbook. Then the small blocks growing into the composition is a more complex components, which are then being used inside the sections. And again, because we are using the types, we are using the CMS, we don't actually need to change anything inside the code. The design system will handle that for us. And that creates an even bigger picture. We can create the templates. And the greatest thing about our design system is developers don't actually need to touch the templates itself to be able to build the different variants of the pages. The CMS and the design system is allowing the product or even designers or somebody who's working in our team just to be able to change and test the page itself and making sure that the business is very happy. So they would know that the product design and development can communicate together. They can be happy about designing and building the new features in the web pages. So to recap, the product will be definitely happy because they will have their users and in a very quick time, the design will be able to see what they actually wanted to see. And development will be very, very happy about the whole progress and be able to deploy to production very, very quickly. So they all will be very, very happy and they will definitely live in harmony. Thank you all. Thank you.